Block 86 belonged to Bon Jovi. If I could bottle it, I would sell it. With lyrics that spurn Satanism and ultraviolence, they proved to be the nice guys of heavy metal. Just don't call them squeaky clean. Their slippery when wet album nearly slipped out with this cover. But PMRC went... But when it was released with this tamer graphic, it went to number one anyway. The album went to number one because... Uh... You called up and requested the video, and you went out and bought the record, and you called up your local radio station and bugged the hell out of them. Yeah. And we thank you. John Bon Jovi did his share for Metal's Future, too, discovering Cinderella in a Philadelphia bar. The big-haired foursome released Night Songs, a debut album that went gold in just nine weeks, and they toured the country with David Lee Roth. Wow, is this really happening? Musically speaking, Cinderella was the first of a new wave of bands to raise a banner for the classic hard rock of the much maligned 70s. I think there's like a big swing back to the to the to to that older sound, like the 70s kind of hard rock sound as opposed to heavy metal, which I think we're more like that. But there was another new sound Young America tuned into this year. Speed metal emerged as a hard rock force to be wrestled with. It's fast, it's powerful, that it's war. distorted, it's obnoxious metal. That's all I listen to. Slayer, Anthrax, and Megadeth all made major label debuts. Their stripped down, sped up thrash, reviving metal's rebel spirit. Metallica! Metallica, the pioneers of this new breed, showed just how strong it could be. Let's go out, pass away, have some fun. Master of Puppets went gold with virtually no radio airplay. We're sort of like one step, we're like furthest out in like left field pretty much from the middle of any of the sort of bigger heavy metal bands today. You know, sort of as unsafe as you can get. <laughs> and um, we get away with it. <laughs> but Metallica couldn't get away from tragedy this fall when bassist Cliff Burton was killed in a bus accident in Sweden. Another sound out of the metal underground is Striper. We rock and roll, but we're Christian guys. These Christian rockers throw Bibles into the audience, and they threw three albums on the charts this year, all told selling 800,000 records. We rock for a different cause, for a different purpose. You know, we do not sing about drugs, uh, sex out of marriage, bondage, S&M, murder, death, Satan. We're against all that. We, we sing about life, we sing about good things, about Jesus Christ. <laughs> From Jesus Christ to the ultimate sinner, Ozzy Osbourne was one 85 anti-hero who stayed on top in 86. He appeared as a preacher in his first movie, Trick or Treat, and his Ultimate Sin album went platinum, inspiring one of the year's ultimate tours. It's a fabulous show. But Ozzy's tour also inspired violence as fans trashed the arena at a New Jersey Meadowlands gig in March. Far from being sorry about it, Ozzy exulted over the cost of the damage. $82,000 worth. Rock and roll! <laughs> Do you have to pay for that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah! So what, man? Rock and roll is here to stay and you ain't gonna stop it, man. Concert violence was an issue for metal bands and fans in 86, causing insurance rates and ticket prices to go up. But for Motley Crue, there was no violence, just a year of transition. From Mary to the Slammer. <laughs> Drummer Tommy Lee married Dynasty's Heather Locklear in Santa Barbara, and Vince Neil briefly went to jail for his role in the 1984 drunk driving death of Hanoi Rocks drummer Razzle. His view of the year? Low point was going to jail. The high point was getting out. <laughs>